Hey everyone, my name is Sebastian, and I'm CTO and co-founder of DC Spark, a crypto ecosystem builder company. And in this video, I want to go over a project we've open sourced a few months ago called CARP, which is a Cardano Postgres indexer, and kind of a replacement for dbsync. So in this video, I want to go over all the work we've done since the creation of this project, so you have an idea of how it works and when to use it. So we had kind of five key goals for this project. The first one is speed. So we want it to be a lot faster than when you get with other indexers. The other one is we want it to be modular. So that is to say, we don't want to store everything, but rather allow each use case, use case to specify exactly what data it needs to store. We want it to be flexible. So instead of storing um, very specific kind of information, we tend to prefer as a philosophy, storing uh, more generally parsable information. Um, to avoid having many different ways of getting the exact same data. We want it to be type safe to avoid any issue and we want it to be well documented. So as you can see, we put a lot of time into the documentation. So you can find the full code on GitHub open source MIT under DC spark slash carp. And you can find all the documentation there as well. So let's get into it. The basic idea is that we take Cardano. And then we filter data from Cardano blocks according to a user specified execution plan. And the result of this user specified logic is then what is stored in the database. Once you have it stored in the database, we provide a CARP web server that can query this database. And that's what wallets or other kinds of Cardano applications end up using. So let's see in more detail what these execution plans look like. So you can see it, as a user, you can specify all the different things you want your specific indexer to do. So for example, I want to get the addresses, I want to get the inputs, I want to get the um, assets that got minted. So you can specify what you want. And if you don't want something, you can just remove it from this file. Um, so you can see, this is the one that comes default with CARP, which says, you know, index the Genesis block, index the Byron blocks. And then for anything after Byron, uh, you have this whole, you know, uh, logic for getting the transactions, the metadata, the NFTs. And we provide you know a bunch of logic for you, but also you can, as I showed you earlier, remove any part that you don't want. Additionally, you can add your own task. So we have an example task here for how you define your own task. Basically, basically the way it works is you define the name, which configurations um, can be passed in. So you got you saw earlier we had examples like read only. Um, and then a few other parameters. So this is done through the config. You can specify the documentation, which air it runs for. And then notice that you can have like a dependency tree. So you can have one task that depends on others. And this is actually useful for parallelization. So CARP will run tasks that don't depend on each other in parallel to improve performance. And then um, to help this, you have to specify which things you were you will read from and which things you'll write to. Um, afterwards, you have a should at task that allows you to as a performance optimization, skip the task entirely um, under certain conditions. And then you have an execute function that gives you the data of all the tasks that ran before uh, you and then um, your task yourself. And then finally, a merge result function that asks you, you know, given the uh, previous data and the results after calculating your task, you know, how should we merge these two together? So uh, we have a lot of, you know, examples inside CARP already. So you can see these are all the tasks that we already have and you can see how they work, what data they access. And you can also see the full source code of the task here, which uh, should help hopefully make it easier to write your own task. As I mentioned, uh, CARP comes with a web server as well. And you can find out more about that in documentation, but also we have an open API swagger definition. So you can see all the different uh, functions that are available in the CARP web server and examples of their inputs and outputs. And hopefully this should allow you to easily uh, spin up a CARP instance and use it for specific applications. We put these endpoints that we needed for Flint um, already, obviously for your own use case, you may need to define some additional endpoints, but hopefully you can use these existing endpoints as templates. Additionally, if you want to, oops, if you want to see something more in detail, 
We also have, let me find the link, example task for you to look at that is uh, slightly more comprehensive. So we have a task here that's a block minter indexing. So if you want to add your own task and you want to see a more in-depth example of how to do it, um, you can check out this uh, comprehensive documentation about um, exactly what it looks like to add your own task to CARP. Uh, both in this PR includes both the web server changes you'll, you'll have to make and the indexer changes you'll, you'll have to make. So hopefully this one PR gives you everything you need. And that should hopefully give you a good overview of what CARP is, how to use it, why we developed it, and how um, you know a lot of projects can use CARP to provide a much faster and much better API for uh, users. Thank you very much.